Welcome, everyone, to the newest show on 91.1 WRMU. I am Patrick Borchard, and this is The Dartboard. Now, before we start, I must read a disclaimer. So just give me one moment to pull it up. Hope you all are having a good evening. Get it. Emails is one of the best and worst technologies of all time. All right. Here it is. The content discussed in this show is my own and doesn't necessarily reflect the views and opinions of WRMU staff, management, or that of the University of Mount Union. So... Now, you might wonder, why is this show called The Dartboard? Well, there's a very good reason. Now, I can't have actual darts in the studio, uh, because windows, and very expensive equipment, and I'm not allowed to break it. So, instead, I have an app. Now, if you're watching the live stream, here's my cell phone. I, I can do a small app that will, uh, choose the topics. You know? It it it's simple. It's very simple. So let's pull up what I'm going to talk about. All right. And the first topic is the Russian elections. Yay. Now, if you don't know anything about the Russian elections, essentially, uh, Put in a surprising victory, uh, Putin not only metaphorically, but physically uh, swept all the other opponents for under the rug. Just everyone is under the rug uh, because he was the only one on the ballot. Now, um, which, if, if that surprises you, uh, welcome to Russian politics. It is called uh, Putin and Putin alone. Putin will put you into a corner. So, Putin's going to be putting you in a corner. Uh, now, the big thing about the Russian elections is not the result. Everyone knew about the result. Everyone knew that Putin was going to get another six years. Uh, it, it, it was no question. The problem is, is how Putin is using this power. Now, a lot of people, uh, especially uh, more... More from like a, a lot of this is taken from Christian Science Monitor, a very good website, a very good news source. Uh, they actually uh, bring up a great response, which is that if that uh, the reason Putin is so much stronger at the moment, the reason he's he's doing things like uh, killing former uh, KGB double agents in Britain, saying that Britain is not safe. Uh, is because of how lax we've been with him. Uh, if you look at Crimea, if you look at Syria, uh, in, in he, there's been these, it's not been lax responses, but it's not been very hard responses. It's been uh, him being uh, much, not, I won't say stronger, but he's been this very big person. While wherever we leave, he fills in. Uh, and... We saw him even uh, attempt Russia attempting to. Uh, well, he they've definitely been messing with Western European elections, uh, and especially even in Eastern Europe, he, he is messing with elections. That is something that is quantifiable. We know that, and he's even we saw Russia Russian bots uh, taking doing large amounts of uh, damage in. The United States election, which actually is another topic we're going to talk about, uh, probably after this one, because it, it leads into it, uh, about the 2016 election. So, what what does this mean for the United States? Well, Trump, uh, not Trump, well, it involves Trump. Since Putin has taken his uh, Make America Great Again uh, phrase and has turned it into Make Russia Great Again, uh... I think there's a little bit of plagiarism, but I don't know the copyright laws in Russia, so I, I can't really talk about it. 
So, again, uh, there is this big conten contention between, uh, at the moment, between Russia and the United States and Russia and the EU, especially, with, uh, well, especially Britain, where, essentially, and I don't think, I think the reason Putin has been doing, been so much stronger, like, been acting stronger, has been putting on this facade of being stronger, is because of how we've been lax in the past. How we've not been much more forceful with him. And I think he, re he expected the same response that he gets every time, which is just like uh, us ignoring it. instead there was this big pushback trump pushback against him uh merkel pushback against him the everyone in the uk was like you're not going to kill people on our soil and i think that the united states because who says that he won't that a, a russian agent won't do the same thing in the united states on us soil so i think what we need to do is make sure that that doesn't happen so, and we're going to move on to the next one, which I, okay, let's see. All right. So, it's actually the one we're going to move on, the one I wanted to move on to. Not the one, which is, is it? Yes. Cambridge Analytica. Now, if you've not seen uh, this, the, any of this piece, like any of this, anywhere in the news, uh, please show me the rock that you're living under, because you better make space, because I really want to live under that rock as well. So, there is... How, how do you describe this? Besides, uh, Bannon f attempting to make cultural weapons of war. Because that's, that's how uh, Christopher Wiley has been descri described it, now, if you don't know, um, here's a brief overview. So, Cambridge Analytica, which uh, really isn't, shouldn't be called Cambridge Analytica. It's actually from, the only reason it's called that was because when Bannon and other investors were seeing it for the first time, they, were, they, they wanted the name Cambridge because Cambridge has power in Britain, in the UK. So, they move, opened an office in Cambridge to, and, and then just said, we, well, now we can call it Cambridge. Because it's in Cambridge. That that's that's solid reasoning. So, while it was really all over the place, it was in a different place. It wasn't in Cambridge. That's that's besides the point. So, Cambridge Analytica, as what they would do was they would tap into certain apps on, uh, like the uh, on the, the Apple Play Store, on the Google Play Store, and they would and certain apps allow you essentially full control over data over people's data so they would go into your facebook and they would take especially this is mainly through facebook which is more why mark zuckerberg was actually called to be in front of mps in britain he was called to the house of parliament to to talk to be questioned because of this so what they did was they would be able to get your contacts your what your likes were what what you were commenting, even your DMs. They were able to get into your DMs, people. This is, this is a thing. They got into your DMs. D they got into private messages that they should not, w which under no law should they be, like, be able to get under. And they were able to get into it. And then what they did was they would take it so that you would only see what they wanted you to see. And, that do and it doesn't matter if it was right or wrong. So, and where is, where is it? The, the objective of Cambridge Analytica was to warp people's perspectives to gain an objective. And what was that objective? But to uh, change the 2016 U.S. election. And even in Kenya. Kenyans are angry about this too. Do you know why? Because there is, as they were coming up on the internet, which no one knows where they were coming from. There, there's all these as they were attacking a certain, uh, certain Kenyan political party, and they were like, "Where's this coming from?" And in reality, it was coming from, uh, most likely Cambridge Analytica. But they're saying, "No, we didn't do it." But they, they were supposed to have deleted data, and 
Facebook is now auditing them again, saying to to make sure that they delete the data, because most likely they didn't. Because in 2016, they were asked to delete the data, and Christopher Wiley said that he deleted the data, but who knows? Because he, well, yes, he is the leaker. How can we? I don't know if we can fully trust him. Uh, so and and and, Rhea, and Christopher Wiley again. Who, who, if you don't know who Christopher Wiley is, he was a for, he's a former employee of Cambridge Analytica, and he leaked out all this. He's been doing interviews, been doing with interviews with Time, The Guardian, uh, and all you even see. Uh, th- there's been more and more leaked videos of Cambridge Analytica high-ranking staff uh, talking. Like bring, bringing up uh, about what they were doing, about like in, stuff that they were doing, all the information that they were doing, about uh, conferences where they would say like we can essentially they even admit that during that they did survey after survey in Kenya that they constantly were reworking the party's uh, objective. They did it twice. They, it's all this information that Cambridge Analytica was a propaganda machine that was that is used to build cultural weapons of war to put out a narrative. And if that narrative, right or wrong, does not matter, just matters what their bottom dollar was. Because even because Stephen because Steve Bannon, who no longer works for the White House, but when he did, he asked for Cambridge. He wanted this because he he he, he asked for it. He asked Cambridge Analytica for for, for weapons. And they got him. So, uh, and it's sad because what does this mean? What is truth? If all, if it can just be changed, and you might say, well, that doesn't matter. Like, why does this matter? Well, the, it matters because if they can change what you see, if they can change everything, your entire view of reality, what is your reality then? Because this is made to make both sides, anyone, everyone, they're able to, using computers, change it so that you see what they know will make you angry, what will spark you, will drive you into a further version of reality. And if that version of reality is true or not, doesn't matter. What matters is that Cambridge Analytica warped your Warp your perspective. Because, again, to warp people's perspective to gain an objective. And if that objective is to make a certain political candidate look bad, to make a certain can- a political candidate look good, what? Wh- where does... Where is the truth? If that is true or false, it doesn't matter to them. It's just that they will get that ad out. That they will get, that people will see that and start to believe it. And it's sad because this is the world we live in. There is, there is always this idea we have to check for fake news. But what happens when you can't find the real news? Because everything is being controlled. It's uh, like the Truman Show, where it's this, it's this entire facade. What ha- that's what Cambridge Analytica has the ability to do on Facebook. It's the ability to build this facade around you that makes it look like it's reality. While in reality, you're living in a house of cards, a house of lies. And we see that this comes down. Because people won't stand for stuff like this. And you shouldn't stand for this. Uh, and who knows how many other, con- uh, how many other companies are doing this. Because it's not like uh, target advertising, where, where it's like when you go on Amazon and you look up uh, teddy bear or, or cotton candy, and, you con- and for the next like three weeks you see things on teddy bears and cotton candies and cotton candy teddy bears. No, it's, you see, it, it, this is changing your fundamental what you, t- because it, it's not only just, because this was limited mainly to Facebook. This was limited to Facebook and like, uh, Google and a few other things. What happens when when a company has the ability to change everything you see online? That that is scary. So yeah. Now 
th- this has made me angry, so we're going to go into a lighter topic. Now, a lighter topic is that you can follow this show on Twitter at the dart- dartboard WRMU on Twitter. Um, yeah, that- that's a lighter topic. I don't use Facebook. I don't trust Facebook. You shouldn't trust Facebook. Stop using Facebook. They know that they, because it, it, even before this, we knew that Facebook was taking data, your data, and selling it to advertisers without your permission. Because, and here's something, if, if I don't really mind if you take my data, but just tell me that you're taking my data. It's like, I, I don't, I, I'm going to mind when someone's like looking in through my window but I want to know, like, if you come beforehand to say, like, you know, you, you can't stop me looking through your window if you live in this house. But uh, I'm gonna, at least, like, I'm going to tell you beforehand. Instead of just doing it in secret. Because one at least shows that they have honesty that they're uh, look, looking into into your windows. While another one is just like, yeah. Like, I'm, we don't need to tell you that we're looking through the windows. That's a horrible analogy. Don't ever use that analogy. Uh, but but it's it's a good analogy for me. So, all right, let's let's pull up another topic. And we have okay. Fifty four severed hands found in Russian river. Now, that sounds like a really dark topic. Well, in reality, the Russian government says that it that it's just all a mistake, guys. It's all a mistake. So, so, so you, you might think, well, how do you, how do you mistake uh, fifty four hands, Pat? How how what are, how is there a mistake about fifty four separate pieces of hands, like not pieces, like sets of hands? Uh, well, you see, a lot of people were saying it's fall play. That most likely this must be like a leftovers from uh, the Soviets. Well, in reality, uh. The court in the Russian government's it's uh, most it, it's from uh, a forensics lab in Kaborskik. Yeah. Now, uh, originally, now there is some evidence to this, uh, people, because there was found around the bo- found around the hands were uh, hospital-style plastic shoe covers. And, uh, like, bandage, like, bandages, like, that you would find in a hospital. Now, original ideas for this were, uh, punishments for theft, uh, medical amputations, uh, that were improperly discarded by medical students, uh, or just remains of cadavers that people threw out. Because, you know, that's just a common thing, is just, in, in Siberia, to just throw out packages of hands. Just a great dump in the ground. Uh... Now this is uh, this was found in the Amur River, uh, which is 20 miles from the Chinese border. So it, it wasn't found far from China. So a lot of people were like, maybe it's Chinese, because Chinese that that was like uh, Chinese went over the border, dumped it, and now they that that's the thing is that they were the Chinese were uh, origin that were the cause of it. While in reality, uh, the Russian government says that it was them that they were the ones who uh did it well they didn't do it they didn't do anything they just kind of like improperly disposed of hands which which is the smallest crime that i think the russian government has done in a long time well eh. like who remembers when the russian government was destroying cheese that that was a essentially if you don't know this story uh russian because I see people in my right here, my live studio audience, are seem very confused. Uh, so Russia imp- had an import ban on food. So what they did was they there's videos of them going into supermarkets and running over like pieces of cheese with tanks, like huge cheese wheels. It, it's it's hilarious. Uh, it's a uh, I think they and then like for some stores they would stamp uh like foreign products like if it was an American product uh I know like one thing was that it was like a it was a bear fighting off an eagle I think that was one of like the stamps 
Uh, John Oliver had it on his show. It's really fun. It's it's really funny. Just like what the Russian government will do because for like this stuff. It's like people think that like the United States is crazy, which it is. We have a lot of weird laws, but it's it will never go like that far. If you if you know what I mean, like we'll never be stamping food with like seals that say like with like an eagle like I, I don't know what's what's a what's a, another foreign country like I don't, it, it won't be like like because Trump's talking about this trade war with like the EU and China so it's not it's not gonna be like in the future like we'll see import like when he puts like if there's import bans on like. Italian wine and cheese, like this eagle, like knocking over a glass of wine and cheese, uh, you know. Now, uh, this is my next uh, next story. Now, originally, so there was a, a story that I really want to talk about because there's only there's only a few stories, and then there's a lot more, just like I guess like opinion pieces that I could go into. Uh, not really opinion pieces, but more like other smaller news stories. Uh, because there's only two, and one of them was actually taken off before I, uh, be, right before this show, there was a critical update to it, uh, which was, originally I was going to talk about a Florida baby that was taken from his parents, uh, in the, in the hospital by tribal court. Now, if you've never heard, if you've not heard this story, there is, it, it's insane. So there was this mother married, uh, a husband. Like, her husband. It, it was, uh... He, they were, like, athletic... He was, like, an athletic trainer for her or something. And essentially, they they, they had kids. Because that's that's what you do when you want... When, when you love someone, you, you have kids. So, they had uh, a son with disabilities. They have a son with disabilities. And it didn't say... And the, the articles I read didn't say anything about the daughter. She had disabilities. But this... she She was pregnant with her next kid... So the mother drops it all, drops off uh, her original kids with, like her, her first kids, over with the grandmother and drives to the hospital. Now, what the grandmother did was she put a, a motion in the in, in tribal courts that said that she was un that the mother was unfit to to actually have her kids. So, the court what the what the deputies did was they took this. And they went, they took the court order, because two, day, two days after the baby was born. And they took the kid out of the hospital by going to, because uh, this was out of Miami. Uh, it was some neighborhood out of Miami. Uh, took the kids, took the kid, uh, had police go there. And now a lot of people were saying, like, why didn't the hospital stop them? Why didn't, why didn't the police stop them? Well... No, in because in reality, the the court, the the tribal court, because if you don't know, this is Native Americans. So Native American like reservations have tribal courts who have power within the reservation, but they actually require a state or federal judge to have like power outside of it, or at least that that's how I've interpreted it. And it's it's all this weird stuff instead of like just just give. Like either give them federal, like give them power of court. Don't or don't. It, it's weird. So, I'm out of breath. I'm talking so fast. So, you see. So, so the they this detective goes to, uh, the police. The police say, well, it's a court order to take the kid from the mother. So they go in. The hospital cannot deny. Cannot like say like okay we can't follow a court order the the father sees the baby once before before she before they're taken away uh what and he and he said like what he says to the child is like i'll see you soon and he's he had not seen her since like after like before she before they got her back uh now the big worry was like where's the grandmother where's uh Where's the other kids? Because they didn't know anything. They didn't have any information. It's and it's just cra it's crazy, because they didn't have uh, an actual they, because they don't ha have power outside of the reservation. They don't have that power. 
uh, they need approval from a federal judge. So essentially, it was them. They went over their bound. They they leapt over what the tribe left over left over. I said that like three times now. Try to get it right. What authority they have to take this child? Now, uh, a lot of a lot of people say that the reason that she that the child even was like under the jurisdiction of the tribe was because the mother because it's because she is uh because of the mother because of the bloodline of the mother but the problem is is there's two problems one two problems one she she never said the, the child never agreed to be part of the tribe the child has to say yes i i want to be part of the tribe Second thing is, uh, I'm so out of breath. Stay. Uh, the second thing is, they don't technically have enough like blood to like. You need like be a certain percentage of the tribe, from what the mother said, to be part of the tribe, and the child does not have that particular amount. So, what does that mean? Like, so. You see this overstepping and bounds, but like like an hour before the show started, there was a an emergency thing that came up on my phone, and it was like, uh, it was like child is no, like child child is uh, returned to parents, and I was like, thank God. And, and but now I yeah, I lost like this huge topic that I was going to talk about it, because in reality, like you, we could argue for a long time, like what power. Uh, like Native American tribes should have, uh, like in, like for legal power, you know what I mean? Uh, it's 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 really like, and I don't really want to have that argument like right now because uh, not only do I feel I'm not like qualified to talk about it, I'm I don't feel that I'm, uh, I, I think that I would need at least like a month of researching. What actually, because this, because from, uh, this is a small community of 10,000, uh, or so people, uh, the tribe, and they have, and the reason that they're, like, like most tribes, they're connected to casino, uh, because, you know, the, the, that's a very stere big stereotype of, uh, people, which is that they're, uh, trying to know what the word is that uh like native americans are attached to, to casinos uh my life as a part-time indian actually goes into really good description of like how that stereotype works where it's it, it's less like it's more whoever owns the casino actually is the one like making the money it's not like the re that's the reason that so many uh native like reservations have low are one of some of the poorest parts in this country. It is because, because not only because there's little aid and because of how we treat them, because uh, of how like service goes to them, but because we have this false stipulation that like of casinos, like casinos are great things for communities. Casinos are great things for people who are part of the casino community. And you can only have so many people at one casino. And it's sad. And uh, it's it's sad that there is this stereotype. And it's and I don't really I don't really want to get onto this, but yes, I, I am. So it's you you see this with um, I guess like natives. And I think that there's there is a reason that they they have their own laws. That there's they have their own jurisdictions because it goes back to. When we first set up the system, and I think eh, it, it's it's a long, complicated thing. We'll get into another show. How about that? Uh, because it, it's a it's a long it's a lot of descriptions stuff I don't know particularly about, and I don't want to misinform you about uh about these things. You know what I mean? Because because that's not what my job is. My job is to report the news. My job is to tell you like my opinions on the news and to maybe hopefully uh make you a little bit better of a person now this is and i think that if i were to 
talk about more about that topic, it would be unprofessional of me. So we're going to move on to the next topic that I have lots of notes on, and it was the last one on my wheel, which was uh, the Austin the Austin Bomber. Uh, like I'm, I'm trying to like get in the camera of the live stream. It's really awkward. I need, next time, next time I'm here, I need to frame myself better. Uh, also, yeah, because you should come check out the live stream on ninety one point one WRMU YouTube. That's that's it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, come check come come check me out live. Come check out my awesome hairdo, which f- for some reason before the show like epically fell apart. Uh, so if you don't know about the Austin bombing, there was uh for several for several days in Austin there there was bombings. There was a serial there was a ser- there there was a serial bomber going around bombing people. Uh that's like throwing out packages, sending it uh well, he sent two through FedEx, and a lot of them just showed up on doors. Uh, it's two dead, sixteen injured. Uh, was was uh, the total amount who who were uh, the the amount of casualties? That's what I'm thinking. So now I will not say the name of the bomber because he does not deserve that. He you should me saying his name, me showing his image is. Me giving this man what he wants. So, and we're just going to call him the Austin Bomber. He's not gotten, like, a nickname. Now, uh, recent the recent developments was, well, Wednesday he blew himself up. Police were on t- getting on to him, and he detonated a bomb in his car with him in it. So, but what they found on his cell phone uh, was 25 minutes of a description of, but yet no motive. Uh, we 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 have no description of why he did this, and he we do have him describe uh, all like his explosives, like how they were made, what they like uh, like in exact detail of how they were made, like what was in them, like all this kind of stuff. But uh, and and police believe that one of them was the bomb that he used in his car, uh, like the one that he blew himself up with. Uh, a lot of them were pipe bombs, actually, with like batter with batteries and fake smoke. Um, and there there was no bombs found in his home, but there was uh, a lot of like bomb making materials, you know, like stuff that because uh, when you look at what he used to make these bombs, it was all stuff that you can find at hardware and sports stores. You can go to Home Depot and and do what he did. You can go to uh, Dunn's and do what he did. Uh, it's it's a con. Uh, now, there's which it's something that a lot of people want is they want a motive, because we don't know because people are throwing around that he was a terrorist. We can't def- we we can't say that he was a terrorist yet, because terrorism has a defi- has a definitive definition we have the definition of terrorism and if we use the definition of terrorism like loosely like we don't use it correctly then we take away the meaning of the word uh now there is now if his we do know that he most likely this is a hate crime i would not which we can't define yet as a hate crime because we don't have a motive because he could be a serial bomber he could just be a crazy guy who made explosives and blew people up. And there's and it's very important that we describe him as a serial bomber right now. Bef- because until we get his motive, we can't properly describe who he is or what he did or why he did it. Because again, if we use these words incorrectly, then we take away power that they had. And we don't want to take away power from these strong words. Because in the future, because when you can just throw these words around, what power do they have besides being buzzwords? And 
and I guess like a center focus of this uh, tonight's show, my first show could be the 2016 election. Because I think that has definitely, there's a lot of parallels that we can describe to it. Where we saw in the 2016 election, a lot of words lose power because of how many times they were used, of how often these buzzwords were used. Uh, and it, I would hate it for us to see such powerful words lose meaning because of what they because of what happened now let's look at some yeah so okay oh yeah I forgot about that story uh I wrote down a lot like I I thought I would fill up more time using those using those uh stories I didn't but uh, there is another story that is out of uh, from the Miami Herald, which is quite sad and funny. So, in Texas, a little girl was attacked by a police officer. Now, you might be laughing, but what? Well, like, pet, that's not funny. A police off police officer is attacking people. How, how how's that funny? Well, you see, it, it's what happened after, like what caused what was essentially she was petting a dog in this cop just freaked out and uh most likely he was intoxicated he might be we can't confirm it yet uh from the reports i read uh there was uh most they, they believed that he was intoxicated uh they don't know if he was on any drugs but they do because they didn't test him uh but they do know he was intoxicated now here's so here's what happened girl pets dog guy Police officer freaks out, grabs, push, tackles little girl, and just starts attacking her. Stepdad comes out and is like, "Oh no, my daughter is being attacked. What is my reasonable response?" And just and, and helps defend. Uh, attacks police officer. Uh, attempts to get him, attempts to get him off. Uh, this do, this fails. He was like, "I'm hitting the guy. It's uh, he is unfazed." Which I think is proof that he is most that most likely he was on some sort of uh, medication. Most likely he he was intoxicated or some something else. So neck. So after that, he is the stepfather was wearing steel tip boots. I'm not wearing steel tip boots. I do own a pair of steel tip boots. They're very good. Uh, everyone should buy a pair of steel tip boots. So he. It essentially kicks him in the head twice and eventually that does get him out uh eventually he is re restrained and he is fired by the police officer by the, by the police station now you might think like oh the reason he was fired the reason this happened was because he was a lunatic who attacked little girls that's what you think the 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 captain would say you he, he, he would say like oh this man was insane Attacking little girls like that. No, he he was like, this is something bad that reflects bad on, like, reflects badly on us. And it's like, how can you be so heartless? Like, describe him, describe your officer, your former officer, how he is. A, a madman who attacked a little girl. Uh, You know what I mean? And, and it's just sad. Now, that, that that's, a, that's just a sad story. And I think that there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of, it's like, police brutality, which I'm, I don't want to get into in this episode. Because, again, the f the pilot episode of the dartboard, with, hosted by me, Pat, Pat Portrait. Pat Griffin. I think that's what I put on my hand, my Twitter. Pat Griffin. Uh, so, we do, there, there is another story which I want to talk about, which I recently was informed about. So, if you don't know, uh... Uh, there, there are Alabama originally allowed sh like this. Pr there, there was this big scandal about how uh, a warden had collected extra food, like uh, essentially food cost. So he, over time, building up to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars that was supposed to go to prisoners' food. Now, 
They are prisoners. They are men who've broken broken the law. But why? But this this seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, like yes, you, you they skimped it off of a basic human right to people for these prisoners, and you know instead of going to like rebuilding bridges or to the school, you, you know like. We took from the Eternals, but at least we did something good with it. No, the man spent $740,000 of it on a beach house. And if you look up the pictures for that beach house, it's not even a good beach house. It, it's a bad beach house. It is, it is one of the ugliest beach houses I have ever seen. And I live on a, like, a horrible beach house. Like, for summers, when I was a child. That, my... I have witnessed beach houses fall apart, like, in front of me, that were better, like, well, like, sturdier built than this beach house. I would rather, like, live on shacks, on tiny islands. I would be Tom Hanks in Castaway than live in this beach house. And this man spent $740,000 on this beach house. So, you, you might think, like, okay... This he he was arrested. He he was uh, probably sent off to the same jail that his criminals were at. Nope. The Alabama legislators say he can do that. That sheriffs can keep food like excess food cost for themselves instead of prisoners. This pre-Civil War law is stands stands up in court. H how? Why? Now I understand that. Like these are bad, th these are bad people. These people have done bad things, but instead of giving the money that you're taking away from people, which is a basic human right, instead of putting it to schools or infrastructure or entrepreneur entrepreneurial like things or subsidies, instead you're building, you're, you're buying beach houses, and not even good-looking beach houses. Look up beach house right now, and anything that, that you find. Look up, like, tent in middle of ocean, and that will be better than any beach house that that warden could think of. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. So, yeah, about 15 minutes left. Uh, and, let's see. Yeah, I don't know, uh. I do want to bring up one thing, which is a, a, every week I want to either talk about a book that I like, like review, like a, a small review, you could say, uh, which you, you might say like, oh, Pat, that, that's a great thing because everyone should be reading. Reading is a very fundamental skill that every human should have because if you don't read, you can't drive, which, uh, I guess my, la uh, yeah, how about this? We're going to talk about self-driving cars, because that's something I just remembered. Because, because actually, you when self-driving cars come out, just don't you don't need to learn how to read. Because, yeah. Because you have audiobooks. Audible. Audible. You, you should sponsor me. Uh, yeah. With Audible and self-driving cars, you no longer need to, like, need to know how to read. Uh, so... If you've not seen recently, a self-driving car killed a pedestrian. Now, uh, this was from Uber. Uber shut down like all their self-driving car services after this, and they were like, "Okay, no more self-driving. Like, we're going to put a halt on it until we can look at the software and make it better." Now, if you look at the video, uh, there, there's two there's two faults in the video. One is one is lesser fault. One is a greater fault. The lesser fault falls on the, the driver of the Uber, who, while he was not attentive, he would not have been able to see the pedestrian, because they were not only wearing like no reflective clothing or like anything on their bike, like no mirrors. Uh, this driver was looking down on his phone, saying like, like, oh look, I'm I'm following uh the dartboard on WRMU at, at WRM, like you know, like just like looking up, like seeing the Twitter post. Uh, it, but it, then, uh, he, it, he hit someone. Now, the major fault is on the, the person who was not wearing any reflective clothing 
Or, like, having, like, lights on their bike while driving. Or, not drive. At, like, late at night, when it's dark out. Because, a as a bicyclist myself, as a cyclist, it, it is my, like, I, there are several basic steps that you, that you do. One is, don't cycle at night. It's dangerous. It, it's, it's, it's one of the most dangerous things you can do. It's like fighting a jaguar with a pen. You just don't do it. And if you do it, th then you bring, like, equipment so it's, so it's easier. It, it's like, like, uh, like, put it lights on your, this is, this is for anyone who, who, who likes to use the bicycle and does it, it wants to do it at night. Uh, bring lights, put lights all over you. You want to look like a Christmas tree because while you might look like a Christmas tree, you, at least people can see that Christmas tree. You want to wear reflective clothing. You want to make your, uh, bike, like, pop out. And which means that if you have a dark colored bike, put lots of reflectors on it. That, that's your PSA for today. Like, because it's, because people are saying like, oh, self-driving cars are dangerous. It's like, no, it's just this person was not, was not, she was also jaywalking. She, they were jaywalking. And I'm not even going to go over the criminal history or the traffic violations that this person had. Because it's a self-driving car. It's not the person who's in the car whose fault it is that this person, because of their, uh, be, because of their negligence, got themselves killed. So, now on to, my, now on to the book review, uh, which is Perspectives on the Legacy of George W. Bush by Michael Orlov Grossman. Now, th this is the book. Now, I would recommend that you go out to Amazon and buy, uh, buy a copy of it, because it is a very uh, I informational book. It is a very well-written book, but sadly, I own the one and only copy that Michael Grossman ever wrote. So, uh, yes. Now, if you wish to buy this from me, you can uh, go to at dartboard wrmu and uh, hit me up, and I might give it to you. Uh, I also might not, but hey, there there is at least a chance. You know what I mean? Uh, so we have about ten minutes left, and let's see. Let's pull. Let's check Twitter. Again. Okay, that's 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 dumb. All right. So let's look over one. Let's look over any topics that I have. So there is. I'm actually kind of bad. So there's. I didn't prepare enough topics. I totally cut them down for an hour show. Okay, let's talk about something that we're gonna talk about more in the next episode. Let this is a sneak peek. If I have a next episode, episode two. Which is the Yemen Civil War. Which, uh, the Yemen Civil War is this horrible, 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 like, co uh, like, mess. Uh, let's just, it, it's, it is, a, it, it's your iPhone headphones when you put them into your pocket. That is what this war is to, to the world. So essentially, if you don't know, uh, where Yemen is, uh, look up where Yemen is. Because I guarantee you don't know where Yemen is. So, once and once you see there, there is so many... So, essentially, there was originally uh, this split between pro-government and anti-government forces. So, once, once those... And, and they were clashing. And eventually, Saudi Arabia comes into the picture. Now, we're, I, I'm focused more on Saudi Arabia due to how Saudi Arabia is one of our strongest allies. Now, if you don't know that Saudi Arabia was one of our strongest allies, uh, is one of our strongest allies. I'm, I'm not. I don't even need to explain that. So, and essentially, you might say, like, well, okay, they're engaged. It, they border Yemen. Uh, there's political instability. We know that Saudi Arabia funds other uh, groups throughout, uh, like other rebel groups uh, throughout the Middle East. Why is this any different? Well, you see, it's because they're bombing civilian targets. Because they essentially want to turn Yemen into dust. From ever, they they are constantly attacking. They've there is constant scenes of Saudi Arabia attacking civilian, like hitting civilian targets, 
And it's not like an accident. It's not like, oh, it's like we accidentally did it. No. They're doing it on purpose. And the United States is refilling up their planes. So, that is a sneak peek into more of what we're going to get into tomorrow. Now, that was a very heavy topic. So, we're going to get into uh, a much... uh, We're going to end the show on a much lighter topic. Now, uh, I think it's it's Hezbollah in Rwanda. Maybe it was out. Yeah, it was Hezbollah. No. It was Hamas. There are so many names, and I'm so tired from standing and talking then I'm pretty sure it's Hamas. If I'm wrong, I am sorry. Uh, I'm actually going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up right now. Live on air. Because I am unprepared. Where is it? It is... Maybe it was. It is... Essentially, a bunch of terrorists released a bunch of schoolgirls. For, for no reason besides just being good people. Uh, Boko Haram? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Vinny, Vinny corrected me. Uh... It's Boko Haram released girl uh released essentially essentially they took a bunch of schoolgirls captive and then they released them. That's good news. That's all you need to know is that terrorists captured girls and then released them and they didn't do anything. Uh that that's that's all you need to know because that's good news and that's all the, that that's a great way to end the show. Uh so again, this is the Dartboard hosted by Patrick Griffin Borchert. Uh, you can follow the show at the Dartboard WRMU on Twitter. Uh, th- thank you for listening, and uh, hope you have a good evening. And back to uh, whatever is on after I turn this off. Have a good day.